All right, hi everyone. They say that uh, our names often dictate the projects we work on. My name is Tai Ming, short for daytime programming. <laughs> when we do daytime programming, we must decide on the precision with which to process our daytime values. For some applications, second precision is sufficient. For others, milliseconds. For our product, we chose nanoseconds. Now, why is that? We are in the business of helping our users move their data from point A to point B. Point A often is a database. SQL Server and Oracle both support daytime precision that's beyond microseconds. Oracle supports nanoseconds. We aligned with Oracle. But who has data that precise? I give two examples here. High volume transactions, which we've heard a lot about at this conference, and scientific data. Time zone conversions are becoming a lot more commonplace these days. And uh, here I give two popular examples. In the first one, uh, we see a conversion between UTC offsets only. This is popular because of ISO 8601. The second example goes from UTC time to local time, and the local keyword here invokes the local IANA time zone and all of its daylight savings rules. And if you were to look at this slide and say to yourself, gee, this looks easy. I can't wait to implement time zone support myself. <laughs> well, then I might say, go on YouTube and search for the words time zone madness. This really is a lovely video by Tom Scott. We were sure we wanted to use somebody else's library. We looked at a bunch of them, strengths, weaknesses. We had significant reservations towards all of them until I came to CPPCon last year, as Michael mentioned, and met a gentleman named Howard Hennett. When I saw his date and TZ libraries, I knew that a winner had emerged. I took his libraries back to my company into production in just a year's time. We solved more than 10 years of user requests for improved daytime manipulations. And here are some of the reasons why Howard's libraries were so great. They've got nanosecond support, IANA time zone support, world-class support. Often Howard will respond within just hours. And most importantly, his libraries have been proposed for the standard. Here's how we used Howard's libraries. We plugged in boost int 128 underscore t as the template type for chrono duration. And a couple of lines later, we had nanosecond precision and IANA time zone support. There was a little something missing in Howard's libraries, though. If you're into calendar math, whether for dates or date times, you might want to rewind the YouTube video back to the slide and understand the invariant that's in the blue box. It will help you disambiguate cases involving the end of month. And on top of Howard's libraries, we built support for five common date time types. And so if you're trending this way, I have captured all of the type conversion rules that we came up with on this slide. Howard's libraries provide POSIX compatible uh, parse and format flags. But what do you do when you have a complex piece of daytime string like on Saturday, June 31st, 2017 at 8.30 p.m.? It takes a lot of time and pain to come up with the right format string, and so our solution was to introduce a live preview tool to our users so they can see in real time whether their attempt has succeeded or failed. And I'm gonna skip over this slide because it's about leap seconds. <laughs> <laughs> and we've come to my impact slide. Howard's libraries are a real time saver. He authored Chrono, so if he cannot get a date or time zone library into the standard, who can? Here's where you can download his libraries and start experiencing world-class support. Thank you, CBPCon. Thank you, Howard. And if you enjoyed this talk, come vote for my poster on the same subject. Thank you for your time.